I probably don't have to remind you of this. How many of you have been planning this day for months now? It is, of course, Black Friday. We've learned that Black Friday sucks all of the oxygen out of the air, and almost no announcements or major developments in the digital marketing space happens. So today, rather than covering what is a very slow news day, we present a special episode. One tactic that many brands are using today is to try to boost sales by partnering with influencers. And for those brands, probably one of the first things they did was to check out an influencer's follower count. Usually the second metric marketers consider is engagement rate, because an influencer with a million followers but a tiny engagement rate won't generate the same results as one with half as many followers, but whose audience hangs on every word they say. How do you know which influencer to hire? And if you're growing your own brand's account as a sort of influencer on its own, where is that tipping point where engagement kicks in? New research in the Journal of Marketing tackled some of that. The article is called Finding Goldilocks Influencers, How Follower Count Drives Social Media Engagement. Zimona Vies is one of the co-authors. She is a professor of marketing at Goethe University in Frankfurt, Germany, where she joins me from now. Dr. Vies, welcome. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Not at all. What is a Goldilocks influencer? <laughs> a Goldilocks influencer is uh, an influencer with a um, upper mid-tier number of followers. So it's not the nano, like super small influencers, but it's also not the big celebrity influencers with millions of followers. Why did you call it Goldilocks? <laughs> um, well... Yeah, that um, that metaphor just came from um, the general practitioner understanding that we learned about when we were um, conducting interviews with uh, practitioners on this topic, that we had one group of um, uh, people saying, oh, like it's nano influencers now. This is like um, the super new big thing in the industry. And then there was this other group that said, no, no, like you, you still want to leverage the reach, you still want to go for these really big, um, yeah, celebrity um, mega influencers. And um, yeah, we we went into that research, um, trying to find support for one or the other camp. And then we ended up uh, in between. Uh, and neither of the two camps really uh, was quote unquote, right, or like optimal. Right. And I want to get to your results in a moment, but can you back up a little bit and tell us what it was that you had set out initially to learn from this study? Um, well, yeah, initially we were just interested in, in better understanding um, whether, well, well, first of all, what is the role of follower count in explaining engagement? Because as I said, uh, we had um, like, uh, it, it all started with one um, influencer agency reaching out to us. Um, with kind of exactly this question uh, they were, um, yeah, thinking about. Um, so we started this collaboration. Then it turned out like to involve many more um, agencies and many more experts in the field to really inform this um, this question. And um, yeah, that kind of <laughs> developed into this like kind of massive multi-method study, um, all with the goal to, well, yeah, kind of understand whether it's uh, the nano ones or the super big ones. And um, yeah, it turned out it's something in between. So what is the answer? What did you learn? Well, it is <laughs> something in between. Um, so we found that um, the turning point lies um, between the often quoted nano and, and celebrity influencers um, at around, so we differentiate between post engagement and story engagement. Uh, we find that the turning point for story engagement is a little lower than for post engagement and post engagement includes like number of likes or number of comments or like number of mentions. Um, and we find that the inflection point for these post engagement metrics is a little bit about 1 million. Um, 1 million, one million followers. followers, right. Okay. 1 million followers. Yeah. And then for story engagement, it's a little lower, but in the same ballpark. Interesting. So, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm always sort of, I think, criticized by people in the academic world for trying to oversimplify things, but I'm going to attempt it again. And, and <laughs> at whatever risk to me that that uh, ends up being. So it, it is it perhaps oversimplification that around a million followers is the right sweet spot to get 
if you want to maximize engagement in an influencer marketing campaign? Can it be summarized that broadly? Excluding the cost structure, right? Yeah, but just if you if you just want to optimize the engagement, that will be the sweet spot. Um, right. We also did a follow up analysis where we somewhat controlled for the additional cost you have when instructing nano influencers who are less experienced who need more help and guidance, and the premium you have to pay for celebrity influencers because they get paid disproportionately for their fame and uh, um, and celebrity status. Yeah, and if you control for that. We find that the sweet spot is a little lower. It's still in the like rather mid tier, so it's it's definitely not the nanos in the like tens of thousands. Um, so it's a little lower once you control for this more complicated cost structure of these very small and very large influencers. Yeah, we've used the phrase nano influencer. What, what was your definition in terms of follower count of, of what a nano influencer is? Just so people have kind of a base understanding. Hmm. Um, so we started with influencers uh, with ten thousand followers, because those are the ones where you can track um, their uh, their follower behavior. So 10 to 50 would be like nano to, um, to micro in our conceptualization. Yeah. Right. And you looked at Instagram accounts, about 800 or so. How do you think your results might have been different if you'd have studied TikTok or Pinterest or another platform? Hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, what was nice about our data was that we not only looked at uh, post data and that it was not scraped because one big problem is that if you scrape data, it's like ex post curated, right? But influencers only keep the most successful ones mm. on the platform or might, mm-hmm. redu- uh, might delete some of the sponsored ones that don't fit their profile or they will only keep those with high engagement. So when you just scrape data, um, you run to a lot of problems in like really cleanly estimating any statistical effect. Um, and, and then stories is not publicly available, so that cannot be used by just scraping it. So um, we we're like really happy with the data set that we created because it included these video uh, elements as well as the post elements. So we hope that these Instagram findings can then, you know, like a little more generalized to other forms because you have both types of visuals. Um, in comparison to only using posts like static pictures. Um, But then, yeah, we didn't do any analyses on on Facebook, TikToks, uh, Switch, and the likes. We don't have any reason to assume that the results would be different because, as I said, we use so many different engagement metrics across two different uh, media types as in posts and and, uh, and, and stories. So, yeah, there was reason to believe that results would hold (laughs) Did you study whether consumers consider how many followers an influencer has in their decision of whether or not to engage with sponsored content? Yeah, Um, we did one big field study that I referred to earlier, but we also did a set of laboratory experiments in which we, um, yeah, zoomed into that psychological process and first of all established uh, via a set of eye tracking studies that users look actively look for that follower quote unquote signal, we call it a signal or a cue that they use, that that followers use to infer their relationship with the influencer. And if the user sees that the follower has a large number, sorry, the user, the influencer has a large number of followers, this signifies that the relationship cannot be very close because Right, an influencer with millions of followers won't be able to entertain meaningful or quote unquote close relationships. So we saw that um, users actively looked out for this information by studying their eye movements. And then when people looked at someone like, I don't know, Kylie Jenner or one of the Kardashians or something and saw that they have a billion followers, how does that affect whether or not they'll engage with the content? Do they do they tend to engage less with massive followings? Do they tend to um, treat the sponsored content differently? How how does it affect? How does how does large versus small follower count affect the user behavior? Yeah, absolutely, it did affect it, or we we saw that um, the user behavior changed, and we saw that this was um, a more uh, well, a roughly linear decrease. So like um, you would in engagement likelihood. So you would see that the more followers an influencer have, 
the less likely is an individual follower to interact and to engage uh, with the content. Yeah. There are a million reasons e-commerce shoppers don't buy. In fact, 97% abandon their first store visit. AdRoll retargeting keeps your brand on their mind, so they come back to buy. Visit AdRoll.com to start retargeting today. We don't talk much about direct mail as a media choice on this podcast, but we may need to rethink that. A marketing technology company called Navistone has reinvented direct mail as a digitally powered marketing channel. The Nevestone platform uses digital intent signals to allow advertisers and agencies to leverage direct mail for retargeting, customer acquisition, and more. Combining data analytics with the proven conversion power of direct mail, the Navistone platform enables simple, always-on marketing for high-consideration consumer purchases. They work with hundreds of brands across industries who see really impressive conversion rates and return on ad spend. If you are looking for some new ideas to drive customer acquisition in high-value customer categories, Navistone is worth considering. And listeners of this podcast can get 20% off the first month of any project for their brand or client by visiting them at navistone.com slash todayindigital. That's N-A-V-I-S-T-O-N-E dot com slash todayindigital. I know engagement is important because it's an indicator of better results um, than just an impression, but... Does engagement really matter to lower funnel goals like purchase likelihood or conversions? We would have loved to study this too, um, but unfortunately our data set um, didn't allow us to test this. Um, we, we we try to create a, something that we call a funnel where we start with impressions and then we assume that a like is easier to do than a comment because a comment involves more effort to do so. And we also studied shares and uh, saves, which we assume, again, like are different forms of propagation because it's, it's some kind of like word of mouth if you share it with others or you save it for another use. So we try, uh, we studied our um, effects across a multitude of, uh, of these metrics, but not final sales. It would be great to, to validate that, though. Right. Um, what does your gut tell you, though? Well, I assume that it also has an effect on sales because, as I said, we find these very robust findings across all kinds of metrics that we studied. Um, so I assume that it will also hold for, for sales. Absolutely. Right. What surprised you the most about your findings? Um, yeah, I think it was the, the super saturation effect um, that at some point engagement is actually worse when you add more followers. So we would have expected maybe kind of, um, yeah, diminishing returns so that, um, that we see less of, um, less of an increase in engagement when follower count increased, but a decrease was not what we expected. Yeah. And bottom line, in, in light of your findings, what should marketers do differently in their influencer marketing campaigns from this day forward? Well, first of all, focusing on uh, the, the sweet spot um, of follower count and uh, not putting too much emphasis on uh, on the small nano ones or the super large celebrity ones. Um, and what we also find in our study is that a set of campaign properties can help to somewhat flatten this what we call inverted U shape, yeah, this uh, this super saturation and decline after the inflection point, um, which means that, um, and we find that customization of the content that the influencer posts and the um, familiarity of the brand that sponsors the campaign, these two factors um, help changing the the curvature, so to speak, which means of the relationship we find, which means that. Um, it becomes less important to um, to find exactly that sweet spot because as the curve becomes less steep, um, the, the the relationship is you're not so much benefiting from finding this the sweet spot because the smaller one becomes more effective and the larger influences also become more effective. So the entire relationship um, is less focused on yeah on finding the exact right number. Um, so that was another uh, finding that we hope uh, um, is useful for practitioners better understanding this yeah, nascent uh, social media tactic or managing investments into this. Yeah. 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 
You had co-authors on the paper. Who were they? Um, I had two wonderful co-authors on the paper, uh, Alexander Blyer from the Frankfurt School of uh, Finance and Management in Frankfurt and Alexander Ehrling from KU Leuven in Belgium. Super. Well, it is fascinating research. I'm delighted you were able to share with us. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Simona Wies is a professor of marketing at Goethe University in Frankfurt. Her paper in the Journal of Marketing is called Finding Goldilocks Influencers, How Follower Count Drives Social Media Engagement. And if you liked this longer form deep dive episode, consider signing up for the premium feed where we usually have one or two of these a month speaking to marketing scientists about new findings in our field findings that really aren't covered anywhere else. When you sign up for the premium feed, you still get The Daily Show, but now you'll get it earlier with no ads, better audio quality, and with audio chapters you can use to skip between stories. You can sign up by tapping the link in the show notes or going to todayindigital.com slash premium. Well, that will do it for the week. Today in Digital Marketing is produced by Engage Q Digital on the traditional territories of the Sunamic First Nation on Vancouver Island. Our associate producer is Steph Gunn, production coordinator Sarah Guild, music licensing by Source Audio, ad coordination by Red Circle. And you know, not many people know this, but our theme composer, Mark Blevis, is one of the world's foremost radio personalities. And it's been a sad week in his field. One of the best passed away. Poor old Johnny Ray sounded sad upon the radio. He moved a million hearts in mono. I'm Todd Maffin. Have a restful weekend, friends. I'll see you on Monday. Science proves quality sleep is vital to your mental, emotional, and physical health. The Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed senses your movements and automatically adjusts to help keep you both effortlessly comfortable. And it's temperature balancing, so you stay cool. So you're at your best for yourself and those you care about most. Life-changing sleep, only from Sleep Number. It's our Black Friday sale. Save 50% on the Sleep Number 360 Limited Edition Smart Bed, plus free home delivery on all Smart Beds when you add a base. And Cyber Monday. To learn more, go to sleepnumber.com. It's here. Peloton's best offer of the season. Get up to $300 off accessories when you purchase a Peloton Tread. Choose from accessories like a heart rate monitor, non-slip grip dumbbells, yoga blocks, and more. If you've been looking for a sign to join Peloton, this offer gives you everything you need to get going. Hurry, Peloton's best offer of the season is here, but not for long. Visit OnePeloton.com to learn more. All access membership separate. Limited time offer cannot be combined with other offers. See additional terms at OnePeloton.com.